This is one of the most requested pieces of content on the channel. How to stand up, super important, especially against bigger people. You don't wanna be stuck on bottom. You have to have a dynamic way to get back to your feet. So I'm gonna show you three ways. These are really the only ways you really need to know. And if you master these three ways, or at least have a basic idea of how to do them, you're gonna have a much better time on the mat, especially against bigger people. You're not gonna be committed to the bottom position the entire time. So the first way, if they have no dominant connection, if they're just chest to back on you and they haven't connected their hands, you're doing a good job of keeping your hands and elbows, your, your elbow to hip connection is strong and your hands are out front, making sure they don't get their hands connected. What I want you to do, just standing up from here is literally impossible. Like having all of their weight bearing down on you. What you need is a moment of vulnerability here. You need their weight to separate off of you for a split second so you can get your feet under you and get your hips out in front. Okay. The position I want to achieve is here. Okay. I want to be standing up. My knee, my hips, and my shoulders are all in one line here. And I've got one foot out. Okay. That's the position that I want. Whatever side they are favoring, that's the foot that's coming out. Okay. And I'll show you why here in a second. So Jake's got his chest on back. He's bearing his weight down on me. He's using all of his weight. What I'm going to do for just a split second is post my hands to the mat and arch my back is the easiest way to describe it, but it's just like a girl in a music video. Okay. So I, I'm going to arch my back like this just for a second. I actually call this the Halloween cat stand up. Just like a Halloween cat, you're going to go from a flat back to a super arch back for a second and you have to do it quick and you're going to use your hands in conjunction with arching your back. So you're gonna push off the mat and arch just like this. And that's gonna alleviate that pressure. His weight's gonna bounce off of you for a split second. And in that split second, in that moment of vulnerability, you're gonna get your foot out from underneath you. And that's what's gonna allow you to stand up. Okay, so we've got chest to back connection. He's made no connection with his hands yet. I'm going to leave my elbow to hip connection for a moment and I'm gonna push and pop. That inside leg comes out. Now notice I didn't step straight forward because if Jake wanted to chop this arm and bring me to this side, there'd be nothing supporting me. And I don't bring it straight sideways because if he pushed me forward from here, I just go right back to turtle. So what I do is I cut an angle on a 45 degree, okay? And I actually stick my foot out from underneath my knee. I stick my foot out here. So if he pushes me forward, I can base. If he pushes me to the side, I can base. Now, once we're here, more than likely, he's gonna start trying to get his hands connected and that's totally fine for now. So what I'm looking to do is push and rotate back onto this leg. So I'm gonna rotate here. And that's the exact position I'm trying to get to. I don't wanna be square to my opponent ever. See how our feet are square together? What I wanna do is cut an angle and create a wedge. This way, he can't lift me as easily. If I'm square to him, he's gonna be able to lift me straight up, Matt return me, and I'm going back down. If I angle my body off, it makes it much more difficult for me to control. And also it creates a wedge for me to roll his grip down, okay? So you see how my body weight kind of goes out from my head to my foot? What I'm gonna do is find the top grip and roll it down the wedge that is my body. And now once the grip is broken, and notice I'm attacking the fingers and the knuckles here. I'm not attacking the wrist and the hand. That's not gonna do shit, okay? You have to go to the fingers and the knuckles, two to one, cover the top hand, roll. Once it's broken, same side arm is gonna put his hand in my back pocket, free arm bicep comes to my ear, and I'm gonna turn, cut and face. The reason we have to bring the free bicep, right? Once we cut here, the reason I have to bring this arm high is because if I don't, if he just has a tight waist, I don't bring this arm high and I just turn, I just rotate into the obstruction that is my arm. If he has a claw, same thing. I just rotate into the obstruction that is my arm. But if I bring my bicep high, that allows me to get skinny and I can actually rotate into that space. Literally doesn't matter what grip he has. He could have a claw. If I turn towards the control hand, okay? I've peeled his top hand, put it in my back pocket. So I've eliminated this hand. Now I'm gonna lift my bicep to my ear and turn towards this hand. If I turn into it, See where his fingers are pointing? If I turn into it, he's not even gripping me right now. Just the nature of the grip, the mechanics, it just gets tighter, right? If he's got a tight waist, if I turn this direction, the way his fingers are pointing, it just gets tighter. He'll just follow for this follow. He's not even pulling on the grip right now. But if I turn into it, it just unravels. And when you cut, guys, one last little detail, I roll. This bicep comes up and it turns and I bring my elbow down in case he tries to shoot. I want this arm to be between us in case he tries to shoot. So I'm cutting and bringing it down. 
That's the Halloween cat version. Let's say I do the Halloween cat and it doesn't work, his weight's too much, but I get here, I almost get my foot up, but his weight's bearing down on me. I have one foot to the mat here. What I need to do is bring this foot out and knee slide. My whole goal right now is to get my chest underneath my hips. Right now my chest is out in front of my hips. I have nothing supporting it, so it's easy to compress me. But once I get one foot up, if he's pushing into me, I need to knee slide and get my hip underneath my chest. So it's just that. I bring my foot out and I pull my heel. I pull and I bring my hips underneath me. I have to fight pressure with pressure. I'm up. He caught me halfway through, I'm getting crushed. The back pop, I didn't quite get there. So I'm gonna bring my foot out and I'm gonna pull my hips forward and knee slide here. If you can catch both hands before they're connected and collapse the fingers, peel and face, do that. But especially against a bigger person, they're gonna have long, strong arms and it's likely they're gonna get their hands connected. So just be ready to fight that. Besides the knee slide, the back pop, the knee slide, you need to know how to quad pod. And that's the third and final technique that you need to know to get off from bottom, especially against bigger people. Quad potting. When you absolutely feel like there's so much of a threat from choking or just them getting their hands connected in any way, it's gonna be big trouble for you. What you're gonna do is keep your elbows disciplined in at your hips, and then you're going to walk your feet out and keep your hands, your forearms, and your quads connected. And then you're going to post up on your other leg and you're going to quad pod, quad pod, quad pod, walk your hands in. That's, it's just that simple. You're walking your hands in towards your feet until you can then stand up, okay? It's just as popular as these explosive stand-ups. It's even more popular in Division I college wrestling in recent years. The quad pod, it's more controlled, it's more predictable. So our opponent has chest to back connection. We want to make sure that they stay on the outside. If they ever get inside on you, you need to have two to one push it to the outside and bring your elbow in and seal it off. Now I bring my connection back here. All right, so let's say that the pressure is too much. I can't explode out of here. So what I'm gonna do is my far leg is gonna go out first. The leg that has the least amount of pressure, I'm gonna post that out and I'm keeping this hand here. All right, I'm keeping my forearm and my quad connected here because I don't want him to sneaky. If I leave this wide open, he can put a boot in on that far side and now things are gonna go from bad to worse, okay? So I keep connection here. So he can't do that. So he's keeping his weight on me. I'm gonna put my hands down on the mat for a second and I'm gonna quad pod here. The whole time I'm keeping my elbows as close to me as I can, walk my hands into my feet, and now I'm standing up and I'm finding whatever hand is on top. As soon as I quad pod here, guys, once I quad pod, whatever hand is on top, that's the leg that goes out. Roll that hand down, same side hand, puts it in the back pocket, bicep to ear, turn and cut. All right, this is probably your best bet for a stand-up if they're directly behind you as well. If they're not really choosing a side and you're down here and they're trying to find an opening, you're gonna just choose a leg and you're gonna start basing up from there. So I'm gonna choose my left side, push, 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 hands to the ground, right knee comes up and I'm gonna walk my hands back, back, back to my feet. Once they're at my feet, I'm gonna stand up, find the hand that's on top, angle out, peel, turn, cut and face. One more time, guys. We have an entire instructional coming out on how to take down a bigger opponent. So make sure you join our email list so you can be notified when that happens by clicking the link in the comments in the description below. That link will actually give you an entire free mini course that teaches you two low risk high reward takedowns that you can start using in your gym in the meantime. This is Adam with Wrestling University, reminding you to always start standing.